Hello everyone and welcome back. We are back uh, with the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We are actually starting the second game today. I played the first game over two years ago. It does not feel like it's been that long. <laughs> but yeah, that's where we are. So we're starting... We're... Like, as I said, we're now starting up the second game. So... Uh, actually, let me fix... Let me do something real quick before I... Okay, got that done. Alright, so yeah, now that I've got all that done and explained. Uh, let's begin. Standing here in the bright sunshine, looking out over the vast ocean, those days in London seem like a dream, but I do miss my time in England's vast capital. You know, he's flourished into a truly wonderful lawyer. I've no doubt that at this very moment he's fighting some noble cause in court. Forgive me for taking so long to come to visit you. My life has been such a whirlwind since I returned. And no one could have predicted what has happened. Just two months after arriving home. I find myself faced with another awful crime. So I came here today to ask something of you. Tomorrow, I shall be standing in court. For the only time in my life. As a lawyer. Oh! So please, I ask for your guidance. Okay, did not expect that. <laughs> Kazuma-sama. Rain says, be very, very quiet. Luna is hunting murderers. Yep. Although I sure wasn't expecting to see... To see her being murdered. I remember her from the first game. <laughs> and I did not like her much. <laughs> 13th of August, 8.26am. Supreme Court of, Ju of Judicature Defendants Antechamber. Three. <laughs> Here I am again after nine months. The Supreme Court of Judicature of Japan. I never even heard of that word until this came. I feel so nervous, but I must steal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. Oh, no, good, you're here. It doesn't do for a lawyer to be late. 
Oh, yes, um, good morning, sir. I hardly recognize you. You cut a fine figure, Counsel. But you look as white as a sheet. Those wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Oh dear. Uh, the truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous, I feel utterly nauseated. I almost wish that I'd never been born. Goodness, not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear from his daughter, I must say. Yuji Mikotoba, professor of medicine at the Imperial Yumei University. A man who, earlier in his life, traveled to Great Britain to study the latest advances in forensic medical science. And, of course, my brilliant father. Um, excuse me. Oh. Would I be correct in thinking that you're to be my lawyer in court today? Oh, um, yes. Yes, that's right, miss. Well, I, um, I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear, I swear on my life. It's a complete fabrication, this whole thing! Ray Memba Membami. Okay, that's a last name I've never heard before. Born the same year as I, and my greatest friend. Though unusual for a woman in our time, she works at the University Research Laboratory, helping my father. And sadly, she's the defendant in today's trial. <sighs> Accused of committing a truly awful murder. Are you feeling alright? Since we started talking, you seem, well, to have become a little flushed. Oh my, um, well, um, it's just that. You look so gallant and dashing. Uh, sorry. And when I fall under your intense gaze, it, well, it makes me feel rather bashful. Mm. Goodness, I don't think she knows. She hasn't realized who I am. <laughs> it would seem our little plan for this trial is going to work. Oh, what what do you mean, Professor Mikotoba? If even your best friend can see the disguise, I think we can relax. Disguise? Disguise? Yes, I've never tried dressing this way before, of course, so I wasn't sure how convincing it would be. But this does make me feel a little relieved, as you say, Father. F father Uh... Ah! Is... is that... Is that you, Suzato? I'm so sorry I didn't say something sooner, Ray. It's just that... No! What are you doing?! What's going on? What, 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 what? That varsity uniform! That varsity cap! That varsity cape! That varsity badge! Look at you! You look for all the world just like a student of the Imperial Yumei University! A male student! I'm so glad you think so. I'm not sure she meant that as a compliment. <laughs> it means all my preparations have been worthwhile. I woke at four this morning to make a start. But... But I don't understand. Why are you just like that? Well, you see... It was the only way. The only way she would be permitted to straight poor <gasps> to take on your defense in this trial. My... my defense? Never before in my life have I felt so frustrated having been born into this body. <laughs> Courts in Japan are a bar to women. Yeah, that's kind of where I figured that was going. We're not even allowed to set foot inside the courtroom. Despite the fact that the laws of the land apply to all people, male and female alike. But women are forbidden. Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door. So that I can act as your lawyer. Oh, Suzato, you'd go to such lengths for me. Of course, you're my greatest friend. 
I just worry that I shan't be the lawyer you deserve. Oh no, I have complete faith in you. Ray. It's so strange though. I mean, you're such an accomplished judicial assistant already. And yet, just because you're a woman... What a wretched reason! I mean, why shouldn't you be allowed in court? You're so gallant and dashing. Yeah, but this is the time period we're in. Like it or not. Um, Ray? Please don't look at me like that. With those flushed cheeks and toady eyes. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just, you really do look so dashy. Y yes, you mentioned that once or twice. <laughs> you should be pleased. It means you look convincing as a man. I am pleased. I think. It certainly helped to bolster my confidence today. Ray. You're managing to put on a brave face in all this, but I can see through it. I've noticed how your shoulders are slumped and how you're trembling ever so slightly. Sato, you do believe me, don't you? I didn't do it. I I couldn't have. I mean, murder. Of course. You have nothing to worry about. Your conscience is perfectly clean. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, it is. Perfectly clean. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Which is why I'll stand by you until the bitter end in this trial. Whatever happens, I'll always be on your side. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer. That means so much to me, Suzato. Defendant! Counsel! Court is about to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. You should go in at once, Ray. If you're late, the judge won't hesitate to pronounce you guilty. Harsh. Oh. Stand aside! I don't think I've ever seen her run so fast. Well, Cesato, you certainly surprised your father. Going to such lengths to be admitted into the courtroom with no prior experience of being a lawyer. There is simply no other way. That's all there is to it. But father, you haven't told her, have you? I mean, I'm right in assuming that Ray doesn't know how it came to this? Yes, quite right. I've kept that information from her. It would only worry her if she found out that no other lawyer would agree to take her case. I didn't want to burden her with that. And is it true, the reason why every other lawyer is refusing to take the case? Is it really because of who the victim was? We should make a move. We should be making a move now, too. As you know, law is in my field, but I'll do what I can to support my student. Thank you, Father. I'm Suzato Mikotoba, a judicial assistant. Eight months ago, I accompanied a student of law on a study trip to Great Britain. But two months ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, I found myself back in Japan. How many times have I wished that he were here, I wonder. Still, I have no choice now but to steal myself for the trial ahead. Wish me luck. Narahodo san. Thirteenth of August, nine AM, Supreme Court of Judic Judicature, Courtroom One. Oh gosh. Okay, I'll be right back in just a moment.
Okay, I'm back. This court is now in session to hear the trial of Ray Mimbami. I swear, that is not... That... Is that an actual Japanese surname? Well, that's kind of strange. <laughs> oh boy, this voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> Haven't done this voice in ages. The prosecution is fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. Oh, looking good. <laughs> Defense counsel, are you ready? Yes, Your Excellency, we are ready. Uh, ready? Oh, uh, yes, counsel. According to your registration details, your name is. Um, Rutaro Narahodo, is that correct? Uh, sorry? Oh, yes, I had to come up with a suitable male name for you for this little venture. Been a little more <laughs> so, I'm afraid I to say I should only put down the first name that sprung to mind. Well, counsel! Uh, um, yes, that's right. It's me. I'm, er, uh, I mean... Yes, I am Ryotaro. He who has vowed to uphold the pride of the great Narahodo clan. Uh... It seems Ryotaro may re need to reconsider how better to uphold his manly act first and not overdo it. <laughs> and those wild white eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. No, hold on. A fresh face in this courtroom, if I'm not mistaken. But the name Narahodo, would that perchance be? You may be thinking of Rinosuke Narahodo, currently in Britain as part of a study program. This is, um... His cousin! Uh, that's right. Ryotaro here has been studying in the provinces, but it was called the capital for this trial. I assure you, it matters the law. His knowledge rivals that of any of Tokyo's preeminent lawyers. Any of them! Tut tut tut! What a pitiful situation! Having been rejected by every lawyer in the capital, the accused has had to call on a country boy. You're trying to keep that secret from her. Jerk. How dare you! Suzato has every bit as gallant and dashing as any of your Tokyo attorneys! Ray, maybe let us do the talking. <laughs> I won't have you making fun of her! Never mind. Her? Ah, uh, um, uh. What an underfied tomboy we have here. I wonder, is your gallant and dashing lawyer up to the challenge of defending you? His wide, skittish eyes very much suggest that he is not. Ugh, I'm so nervous. Now I'm standing in his shoes and starting to understand what Narahodo's song goes through. Like it or not, eyes are want to flit. The case to be heard on this day is a matter of great significance to our national interest. Oh my gosh. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of this trial may well affect the future of our empire. Just like the trial nine months ago. And yet, for proceedings of such importance, we have this unknown yokel by the dock. You're me. Oh, perhaps this would be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense.
to determine whether you are sufficiently competent to practice in this courtroom. Nine months ago, when a certain other Naruhodo stood where you are standing now. The same judge tested him as well. And even though he was just a student at the time, not even of law, he passed the test with flying colors. For a trained and experienced judicial assistant like you, this will be easy. So, counsel, do you consent to answering some simple questions? Alright, it's time to prove myself. Yes, Your Excellency! But please do make them simple. Very well, to start with... You will state the name of the victim. Phew, this is simple. I couldn't forget that if I tried. Uh... What's the matter? Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand something else Naruto san goes through. Like it or not, my answer. Want to blink? It's not surprising, really. It's your first time in this position, and... In that guise. And a bright spark, spark like you is bound to flicker and falter a little under the circumstances. Oh dear, this is a dismal failure. Don't fret. You need only use the knowledge you've gained as a judicial assistant to overcome the problem. Uh, of course, the court record! Yes, the answer will be amongst all the key information about the case in the court record. That's right, just use R1 to open the court record. Then you need to flip to the people section with R1. And don't take too long over it. His Excellency is watching you closely. Alright, check the court record with R1. That's where the information I need will be. I'm waiting, counsel! What is the name of the victim in this case? Giselle Brett, age 25, the victim of the case, who was a former British exchange student. Nine months ago, she was found guilty of the murder of visiting professor Dr. John Wilson. who lost her life in this case is Miss Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. A name that will never be forgotten in the courtrooms of our country, I'm sure. Correct. And being a member of our Empire's judiciary, you will be well aware of the significance of that name. <laughs> so, let me pose another simple question. As you know, Miss Brett was a visiting student from the Empire of Great Britain. Why, then, is her name indelibly associated with her own empire's judicial history? Obviously, you won't have forgotten that case of nine months ago. But if it's proven hard to recall the finer points, everything you need is included in the court record. Obviously, I still remember. That was the start of everything. Giselle Brett, behind the woman's student persona, was the face of Queen Victoria. Yes. Nine months ago, a visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University was killed, and the culprit was Giselle Brett. Yes, she was a killer. At the time, our country had just signed a new treaty with the Empire of Great Britain. And it was in the midst of this delicate diplomatic situation that the incident occurred. I wonder who the murderer actually is. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Giselle 
an Englishman, Dr. John H. Wilson, was shot dead. I believe he was an associate of yours, Professor Mikotobo? Yes, I was indebted to the man. He'd been my mentor when I went to London to study forensic medicine. Indeed, it was I who invited him here to Japan as a visiting professor at the university. Naturally, the murder of an Englishman on our own soil was a matter of the government wished to resolve rapidly. Indeed it was, which is why a secret trial was conducted here at the Supreme Court. A student of the Imperial Yume University was arrested on suspicion of murder. A second year English language student by the name of Ryunosuke Narahodo. <clears throat> With the help of his best friend, a student lawyer, the accused conducted his own defense. And exposed the despicable crime committed by Miss Giselle Brett. Someone tell me, are we actually sad to see her to learn she passed away though? Surprised, maybe, but not but Anyway, moving on. Miss Brett eventually admitted to her crime. However, when questioned about the motive that drove her to take Dr. Wilson's life, she gave no satisfactory answer before the trial reached its conclusion. Immediately after the trial, the British government brought its consular jurisdiction into play. We were unable to sentence Miss Brett according to our Empire's laws. It was decided that she would be removed to Shanghai, China instead. Wait, what? Okay. Why Shanghai? There's a British consular court there. Correct! I oversaw the negotiations personally. The date of her transfer to Shanghai was finally settled only upon only last week. Really? It took you nine months to sort that out? Ugh. All that remained of our Empire's obligations was to see the woman safely on board a steamship. And yet, the very day before her departure, the Englishwoman was killed! Uh, only the day before? That will do! I'm satisfied that the Council for the Defense is sufficiently capable of representing the defendant. Uh, oh! Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Over the first hurdle. Now, a summary of the incident, if you please. Prosecutor Alchi? As is your wish, Your Excellency. The repugnant crime took place on the 11th of August in broad daylight. On the outskirts of the Imperial Capital, under a bright blue sky, at a secluded bathing spot by the sea. The incident occurred inside a small beach hut, erected for bathers to rest or change their clothes. The cause of death was a single stab wound to the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lung. An injury which proved fatal. There were two persons alone together in the beach hut at the time of the victim's death. Miss Brett, in her bathing attire, and the accused, Ray Mimbami. Accordingly, there can be no doubt of the accused's guilt, especially when we consider she had a powerful motive. The police arrived rapidly at the scene and promptly arrested the young lady. Uh-huh, and what was that motive, suppose, that supposed motive? Well, that extraordinary description of events leaves me somewhat lost for words, I must say. That's certainly true. The prosecution summary. <laughs> Nothing sissy in this trial? 
Oh, sussy. Yeah. Welcome to stream, Washi. How you doing? That's certainly true. The prosecution summary. N yeah. N no problem. I understand. It was full of words that raised an awful lot of questions. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about... The motive? You're clearly exaggerating. Powerful motive is a blatant overstatement. Tut tut tut. He's a yokel boy using long words he doesn't fully understand. I beg your pardon? Given that this is coming from Alchi, there is a lot of doubt that the defendant is the murderer. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and as I said, he doesn't even bother to tell us what that motive is to s see if it makes any sense or not. <laughs> no matter. Let us put this to the accused, shall we? Mimbami san. I'm sorry, but that name. You are a research assistant at the Imperial Yume University, I believe. Yes, I am. I'm working with Professor Mikotoba in his laboratory at the moment. I can confirm that. The defendant is an excellent assistant with a strong sense of responsibility. Fascinating to hear. Now, another question. Prior to your work with Professor Mikotoba, whose research were you assisting then? Oh, um, well, um, I was studying under Dr. John H. Wilson. The defendant can't be guilty. I was with her doing taff and electrical. Dr. Dr. Wilson, the visiting English professor who was murdered by Miss Brad nine months ago? The accused had a deep-seated respect for her former mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is that not true? Yes, Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Then tell the court what deep-seated feelings you had towards the English woman who killed him. Also, it's first case. They aren't going to do the plot twist where it turns out that the defendant was actually the murderer this early if they do it. Right. Well, obviously I was filled with hatred for what she'd done. A powerful hatred. I think everyone who played this game probably was, too. <laughs> or the first game, rather. Oh no, Ray, be careful of what you're saying! Ah! The motive was revenge. Plain and simple, Your Excellency. Hmm... Well, it was clearly a trap all along. How wicked of him to use Ray's undying respect for her former mentor against her like that. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that's correct. In fact, that's really just kind of him putting words into her mouth. <laughs> I must find out more details and so that we can use to bolster our defense. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about... I guess being alone together? Or maybe I was supposed to ask about all of these eventually. <laughs> I thought maybe I was only going to be asking about one of them. Um, mebami san Yes, what is it, san I, I mean, um... Naruhoto-san. Please stop slipping up like that. <laughs> I'm really starting to wish she... We'd made my alias Ryotaro Suzato. The real motive was Dr. Wilson sticking her with a pill for the beefsteak! <laughs> if I hate someone and then that person was murdered, that doesn't mean I murdered him or her. Right. Of course. Please tell the court why exactly you were present at the bathing spot with the victim in the first place. And why you were alone with her. Oh, well, no, that's not true. It wasn't like that at all. 
but it is nevertheless relevant evidence. Uh, yeah, and Ray, what are you thinking? What do you think we're talking about here? There were other people present. A detective who was guarding Miss Brett for starters. Gee, I wonder who that detective might be. Oh wait, no, it wouldn't be him. Never mind. I was just asked to accompany Miss Brett as a companion. That's all. Oh, now I remember who murderer is. Not going to say who. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Reen. I appreciate it. I was just asked to accompany Miss Brett as a companion. That's all. But let us be clear. At the moment of her death, you are alone together with the victim in the hut. You and no one else. Is he still... The murder is Larry Putzon. <laughs> okay. At the first... In, in the first... In the first game when this woman was a witness, you know, before it was revealed she was the killer, this guy was just... I don't want to say the word I'm thinking of on stream, but... But, uh, he was just, I, I guess I'll put it this way. He was pretty much fawning all over Giselle. <laughs> and like I said, that's putting it, that's putting it brunt. Uh, yeah, okay, well, yeah, well, that's a good term for it. We'll use that. <laughs> we'll use that, Ashi. <laughs> because as we know, when something smells, <laughs> yep. But yeah, brown noser, that's a good word for it. <laughs> But basically, I'm saying I hope he's still not doing that. The truth is, there is only one reason why this young woman accompanied Miss Brad on her bathing sojourn. I hope I said that right. It was the accused's last chance to take the victim's life. Oh. Well. Okay, I kind of see what he's getting out there. I think she is supposed to be a lot like a certain other murderer in the Ace Attorney series. Probably so. I think I know who you're referring to, unless it's someone from a game I haven't played yet. <laughs> no! Because, as we know, the following day would see Miss Brett extradited to the British authorities in Shanghai. In Shanghai. And because the government was, then was falling over itself to kiss up to Britain, so he had no issues throwing some random guy under the bus. Yeah, that too. There is that too. would never have an opportunity to, sp to dispatch her again. Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. He also wanted to win at any cost. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's pretty much the norm. <laughs> the prosecution counsel seems to enjoy using provocative tricks like that. But for now, at least, we need to assemble more facts. Try not to let him goad you. <laughs> Just checking in at work. Good luck today. Thanks, Soup. And thanks for the stretch. Uh, 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 uh. Oh dear, this is really terrifying. The father's right, we need more information. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution on what he said about, okay, the bathing spot is the only one we haven't questioned him on. Um, if I may, Prosecutor Aoshi. 
What do you want, you fresh paced fresh faced young yokel student? Alchi has no problem with using bogus evidence, probably due to the fact that he doesn't bother to make sure it is credible evidence. Probably not. I mean, you're probably right. I wonder, could you explain, please? You mentioned a bathing spot. Haha! <laughs> my apologies. Clearly my modern modernity has confused the poor country bumpkin's simple mind. How did his family stay in the lawyer business for so many years? Gah! Bathing spots are the very latest trend in health practices in the West. I don't think that's what she was asking! We are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic, and excellent for the skins. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. I was referring to the fact that Miss Brett had, to all intents and purposes, been found guilty of murder. Oh yeah, you bring up a good point there. Why would a known criminal have been have been relaxed by the sea? C condescending moron. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and in the process, he made himself look stupid. <laughs> For all time's sake, I believe. Sorry. Miss Brett was to depart for Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to enjoy a day at her country's wonderful coast. Then the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. To be fair, it doesn't take much to make them look stupid. Very true. That is very true. But, but on what grounds would we agree to such a request? Because, as usual, our government is unable to stand up to foreign powers. Yeah, as much as that sucks. In matters of diplomacy, it seems we don't even have the courage to decline the whims of a known criminal. D don't look at me, Professor! It was the government who granted permission, not I! Their point still stands. In any case, it was decided that with a dedicated detective on duty, nothing could go wrong. But in fact, a murder took place. I I said don't look at me! It was that young student girl who did it, not I! I don't know, let's talk about this detective a bit. <laughs> no one has proved that yet. I wouldn't provoke the man if you don't need to. I believe we all have a clear picture of the incident now. Innocent until proven guilty, Ouchie. Yep. Although, I'm not sure if that was something that was... I don't know if that was a philosophy followed in this country's system, especially at this time period. Eh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Despite her guilt being determined nine months ago, Miss Brett managed to avoid incarceration, instead continuing her research work at the university. Yeah, of course. Obviously, over that period, she and Ray would have encountered each other on a number of occasions. Seeing the murder of the mentor for whom she had such great respect, enjoying such undeserved liberty... Yes, even if it was only temporary until Miss Brett's extradition, extradition to Shanghai. You can hardly blame Ray for her feelings of anger and resentment. Poor Ray. So, Your Excellency, if you'd be so kind as to peruse this exhibit, a photographic print that shows the scene of the crime immediately following the grim incident. Yes, thank you, Council. A tragic image. As you can clearly see, there is nowhere within the hut that anyone else could have hidden. The 
The court will accept this photographic print as evidence. The photograph of the crime scene has been entered into the court record. Crime scene photograph, a photographic print of the scene taken by police just after the incident occurred. The stab wound in the victim's back is clearly visible. As I understand it then, the victim and the defendant were alone inside the beach hut at the time. Just kind of looking over it for now. Over the crime scene for now. What is that thing? Oh, it's her purse, okay. Hmm. Well, there's the... There's clearly the most immediate concern. Or one of the most. Anyway. As I understand it then, the victim and the defendant were alone inside the beach hut at the time. This is deeply troubling, I must say. The finger of guilt points firmly at the defendant. How? Well, Your Excellency, naturally the prosecution has much more to its case. Oh, well, that's a surprise. We intend to prove the accused's appalling actions beyond all possible contention. To that end, I can confirm that we have multiple witnesses to the crime. Damning evidence. W witnesses But- but who? Uh, well... One of whom, I might add, is a highly respected police detective. Oh, this ought to be good. I assure you, the testimony of these witnesses will leave no room for doubt. Ugh. Very well then, Council. Bring forth your witnesses. Uh, what's the holdup? I, Takitsushi Alchi, have been waiting for this moment. Sorry? Oh yes, I haven't forgotten that trial nine months ago, here in this very courthouse. Oh my gosh, you can't. If he's getting out what I think he is, I'm mad. When that irreverent little student boy utterly humiliated me. I knew it! Gosh, get over it! Sure ain't his fault you were simp over. <sighs> ah! We know skin our hold out! what yes? This insults out she family name will never be forgotten! Um uh, apparently I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> or forgot about you saying that anyway become conceited with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. <laughs> okay. Where did this come from, then? Or, well, you know what I'm talking about. Strike the head of a samurai whose top knot has been cut, and the bell of cultural enlightenment tolls. If you say so. Yes. On that fateful day, my former self died. Uh, the start of your own mini major revolution. Uh, are you modernizing as well, Council? Silence! Since I swore revenge back then, there has been a minor miracle atop my head. Observe the Alchi growth. You s uh, 
I knew talking for him was going to be a murder on me. You see? You see a seed of hope sprouting forth from the barren expanse of my crown, if that's what you want to call it. I, I think that tiny growth is trying to tell me something. Like what? <laughs> um, I'm afraid I can't really see. Well, where's the hope exactly? I said silence! Today I face another young student of the Narahoto clan. Well, I will vanquish you! And my victory will be fertilizer for the seed of hope atop my head. You have been warned. Are we gonna shave it off when he loses? <laughs> With that, the prosecution calls the witnesses to the stand. I was telling you that Ouchie is a loser. Oh, yeah, it could be that too. It looks like the stakes are high on both sides of this trial. I'm sure he'll get over it. Oh wait, no he won't. <laughs> the prosecution and defense each has much to lose. A haircut is hardly a haircut is hardly comparable to Ray's life. <laughs> I think I remember these two. Uh, why does he have a turtle on his head? <laughs> Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Chief Inspector Satoru Hosunaga, Imperial Police Bureau. I'm in disguise, obviously, so I can go undetected. That's not like the turtle. And I am, well, the next big thing in books. An author renowned throughout the capital, in fact. Yes. Soon to be- yeah, I do remember this guy now. I mean, I remember both of them, but uh, it this guy I wasn't so sure about. Soon to be sold out! The satirical I Am A Cat! A sensational success by Soseki Natsume! Oh my goodness! Struggling student from the provinces, please, you need be in awe of me. I needn't. It's only natural that you'd feel nervous in my presence. But all of you, please relax. Call me so so sick even. Um, yes. What on earth is Soseki san doing here? Thought she might I couldn't I thought she knew him, I wasn't sure if she did or not. Tread carefully, says Otto. That author fellow knows you from your time in London, doesn't he? If he exposes you for who you really are, this will be over before it's begun. Yes, yes, of course. I know. I presume Soseki san won't have forgotten about me. I could certainly never forget him. Soseki is definitely not the murderer. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think so either. Although he does seem to have changed somewhat in the six months or so, and it's been since I last saw him. <clears throat> and as for Inspector Hosnaga, that amazing outfit is hard to believe. <clears throat> Do I have something on my face? Well, your glasses for one. Both of them don't seem to be helping you see. Thank goodness he hasn't recognized me either. Oh, I suppose it's this disguise, is it? I thought that appearing here in the clothes I was wearing at the time would make for a more faithful testimony. Or make you look suspicious AF. It is my guiding principle to carry out all testimonies flawlessly. Well, I can appreciate why an Imperial Police Bureau detective might have been present. But what business did a writer such as yourself have at the scene, Saseki-san? Oh, uh, well, you see... I had been asked that day to give a lecture. On the morning of the in incident, in the Imperial Yumei University's Grand Lecture Hall, no less. At Yumei University? After the lecture, I had a very pleasant conversation with a researcher from the medical science department. The professor over there, in fact. With my fu- With Professor Mikotoba? Yes, that's right. It was arranged by one of the newspapers. 
They wanted some story or other about two former students who'd studied in Great Britain. But of course, being around Arthur, the press never leave me alone. They secretly spy, snapshots, scribble stories, and scoop on my privacy. I didn't know paparazzi existed back then. Uh -huh. Oh, as you can see, the conversation was written up in this newspaper here. Read it at your leisure, my provincial struggling student friend. I have plenty of copies. Uh, thank you very much. You practically threw that paper at me. The Saseki Natsume article has been entered into the court record. A newspaper contained an article about a discussion between my father and Soseki-san. The debate became quite spirited. Hi, kitty. No, it's cute, kitty. Um. Hmm. Oh, what have we here? Uh, it took me a little bit to pay attention to that because I was looking f for something in the photo itself. Anyway. Anyway, following my interview with the professor, the lady in question appeared and made a very unexpected announcement. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. Those were her words. I don't remember if that's the voice I gave Giselle or not. It's been so long since I played it. Played the first game. As I explained before, Miss Brett was never taken into custody. She continued to work in my laboratory, under strict surveillance, of course. And which at an utterance. Uh, and which utterance, the university immediately contacted the government to seek guidance. And the response was, permit Miss Brett to go as long as the detective accompanies her. That detective I am at liberty to divulge was me, Chief Inspector Satoru Hosnaga. Thereby, the entire party departed cordially for the seaside, it seems. It was extremely challenging to clear all of the members of the public from the vicinity of the beach. But fortunately, I am at peak physical fitness at the moment, so, if you say so, I was able to carry out my duty flawlessly. Oh my, Inspector, you... Well, you do have something on your face now. Oh, how unsightly. I do apologize. Does that mean- Does that mean you went to the beach too, father? No, no. Fortunately, I had work to finish off. But unfortunately, of course. It meant that, as my assistant, Ray was invited to take my place. Of course, being a renowned author, I didn't like to decline the invitation. Ah, but if only I had! I'd never have seen that awful sight! Not him! <laughs> Relentlessly wrecked by remorse and regret! Very well. I must now ask you to present your formal testimony to the court. You will give an account of all that you witnessed in, on your impromptu excursion to the coast. 
I just do not like that guy. <laughs> uh, you're talking about which one are you talking about? <laughs> just making sure I am. I'm on the same page as you. <laughs> Author. Oh, okay. <laughs> Also, that turtle is getting to me. <laughs> like, why did he tie a turtle to his head? <laughs> of course, Sir X, let's see. Relentlessly racked by remorse and regret, I am. <clears throat> The witness scene. On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance assignment in this disguise. I just managed to catch that crab when I suddenly heard a catawall from behind me. I ran into the beach hut at once, where I found the parent question. Yes, yes, yes! That young girl was a stride English woman, dagger in hand, as she stabbed wildly. I saw blood on the blade. It proved to me that she'd stabbed the victim multiple times. Time of death just after 2 p.m. <clears throat> uh huh. Death is believed to be due to trauma to the victim's lung from a knife blade. Only a single wound was identified. Okay then. <clears throat> Indeed, it does appear from this testimony that both witnesses here present saw it. <coughs> the very moment of this heinous crime. What? Now, if you will recall, I promised evidence as well. What phrase did I use again? Ah, yes, that was it. Damning evidence. What have you there, Council? A so-called fountain pen, is it? Correct, Your Excellency. I found it at the scene whilst examining the body. It appears that in dying moments with the final ounce of strength. <coughs> the victim clutched a piece of evidence that would positively identify her killer. What? Your Excellency! If you would cast your eyes over the photographic print of the crime scene once more. <coughs> oh, goodness me! Yes, <coughs> the victim is clear. Oh, yes, the victim is clearly grasping something quite deliberately there in her hand. That's right, the fountain pen. pen. And if you would kindly examine the pen, Your Excellency. Ah! The owner's initials have been engraved into the ebonite barrel. R.M. Ray Mimami. The initials of the defendant. Uh, no! This fountain pen will be admitted immediately as critical evidence. The fountain pen has been entered into the court record. The pen that the victim was found grasping in her hand. It carries the initials RM. So, have I admitted anything? Decisive testimony and damning evidence. There's a bright blue sky outside the courthouse today. Perfect weather to ascribe guilt, I fear. I feel. I don't understand. The prosecutor Alchi of nine months ago had none of this man's poise. Counsel for the defense, you may begin your cross examination now. Narahodo san! Narahodo. That means. Oh, yes, me! 
Is there another Naruhodo in my courtroom? Actually, there isn't even a single Naruhodo in your courtroom. Cousin Ryotaro, pull yourself together, please. Alright, I've seen this countless times as a judicial assistant. Find cons inconsistencies in the witnesses' testimonies to prove that they're lying somehow. That's all there is to it. That's how a real lawyer would handle a cross-examination. Let's see what I can do! Cross-examination. The witness scene. On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance assignment in this disguise. I just managed to catch that crab when I suddenly heard a catawall from behind me. I ran to the beach but at once where I found the pair in question. Yes, 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 that young girl was astride the English woman dagger in hand as she stabbed wildly. I saw blood on the blade. It proved to me that she stabbed the victim multiple times. Objection! With that accusatory cry that just welled up from deep inside me, I think I finally understand. Every time Kazuma saw and Narahoda saw I stood up here at this bench. The stakes have been very, very high indeed. Well, what's the meaning of that menacing pose, Council? I'd like the witness to clarify something for me. Who? What? Where? When? How? Not you, Sosepsi-san. This query is directed at Inspector Hosunaga. Hmm, at me? In your statement just now, you said that the victim was stabbed multiple times. Yes, that's right. As I said when I entered the hut, the defendant was already standing over the victim, bloody knife in hand, like a murderous demon. And yet, that cannot be. What? Get to the point, please, counsel. In the post-mortem report, it clearly states that the victim was stabbed one time only. Oh! Uh! <laughs> In other words, Inspector Hosunaga's testimony is clearly flawed. Ugh! And Soseki-san! Me? You claim to have seen Membami-san in the throes of stabbing the victim. Uh, yes, uh, yes I did. Wildly! But both you and the inspector confirmed the same point. That there was already blood on the knife that you saw the defendant holding. Uh, yes. And It's quite simple. We know the murder weapon was used to stab the victim only once. Therefore, there is no way there could have been blood on the knife if that single stabbing hadn't already occurred. Oh, true! Then what exactly is your contention, Council? Are you ever going to tell us? Yes, Your Excellency. There's only one logical conclusion. When Soseki-san in fact saw what was not the moment... What Soseki-san in fact saw was not the moment that the defendant stabbed the victim at all, but the moment that the defendant in fact withdrew the blade from the victim's body. That... that can't... Be! Excellent work, Shizato. You exploded at them with that objection and then proceeded to pull them apart systematically. Objection! <laughs> well, well, this takes me back. Hmm? Yes, I seem to remember your cousin staged a scene much like this in that trial nine months ago. A half witted child with a half baked objection attempting to steal a show. You're right. 
There were certain similarities. Except the so-called half-witted child managed out with the prosecution, who has only half a head of hair. Slander! My head is quite adequately dressed. In any case, all this talk of stabbing and withdrawing in multiple wounds. It makes not a jot of difference. What? Why not? Engage your brain, young man. It's not slander if it's true. That's right. When the accused first plunged a deadly weapon into the victim, that was the fatal blow. And it was that moment, just as she had withdrawn the blade ready for her next strike, the witnesses saw. The knife was already tainted with blood because the accused had already stabbed the victim. Ugh! Oh yeah, successfully showing the little display is that the mustached author is prone to moments of extravagance. No! Oh, uh! I am in agreement with the prosecution. If the defendant had seen wielding was seen wielding the blade at all, that is sufficient grounds for her actions to be viewed with suspicion. But, but she was withdrawing the blade. Then we are back where we started. Sorry? Consider this, young yokel boy. If a student girl is innocent as you claim, then why would she have pulled the blade from the victim? And with the cold demon and with the demon's cold blood composure too. And why would she pull the blade f from the victim? And with a demon's cold blood composure, too. The prosecution demands an explanation, and it had better be good. Why did Ray pull out the knife? Oh, yes. Going for the jugular. Huh? Hmm? What does Father mean by that? Let the court hear your answer then, counsel. The truth is, I don't really know. But I have to come up with a plausible reason here. If or we don't have a case. The reason why the defendant pulled the knife at blade out of the victim's body was surely so she could
The reason why the defendant pulled a knife blade out of the victim's body was surely so she could. I think it was possibly so that she could hide the murder weapon. Objection! And yet the murder weapon was left there. Thrust in the sand at the scene. Wait, it was? Uh, I'm not seeing it. for the victim, she couldn't find a place to hide it, so that was her only option, perhaps? I think, Council. That you were ill-advised with your fancer initially, and you were further ill-advised to pursue it. Oh dear, I'm terribly sorry. This job is not to be taken lightly. There's just so much pressure. Does we Meta or East first? Um, I'm leaning towards East, to be honest. Don't get me wrong, me Metaphor was really good, but I think I'm just... But East, I'm just a little more drawn to, I think. Just because you're under pressure doesn't mean you can say the first thing that comes into your head. Uh, I'd like to revise my answer, Your Excellency. The reason why the defendant pulled a knife blade out of the victim's body was surely so she could... Well, I guess save her life, but that doesn't make sense. I mean... I guess they wouldn't have known this back then, but you're not supposed to pull pull the weapon out of the out of the stab victim. <laughs> but again, they may not have known that back when this took place. So, according to the postmortem report, the victim's death was not instant. That's correct. It's thought she would have remained conscious for a short while after sustaining the injury. Indeed, giving her the time to take hold of this piece of evidence that clearly indicates her killer. The, the point is, uh, being a medical research assistant, Mimbami san was compelled to act when faced with the wounded victim. Even they did not... Even if they did, not everyone would know that. Fair enough. That's a good point. <laughs> And Bami san was compelled to act when faced with the wounded victim. Instinctively, she pulled the blade out in an attempt to save Miss Brett's life. <laughs> Did you hear that, Your Excellency? It would seem this is the best we can expect of this young yokel. Hmm. Indeed. Ugh, is it just me? Or does it suddenly feel much colder in here? Your Excellency, if I may? Speak, witness! I would like another opportunity to testify. Really? <laughs> in respect to the slipshod assertion just put forward by the Yokel Defense Council, I mean. S slipshod? <laughs> An excellent idea, Inspector. Our young yokel hopeful has a modicum of knowledge when it comes to the law, it seems. But in matters of medicine, he appears to possess not one iota of common sense. Very well, Inspector. I will permit your request. You will testify again before the court. 
on the subject of the defense counsel's assertion. Yes, sir. I will do so flawlessly. Forensic medicine primer. <laughs> Pulling a blade from a wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. Yeah, that's just what I was talking about. <laughs> that's basic knowledge that any medical research assistant with an ounce of sense ought to know. In other words, there's no good reason why the defendant would have tried to pull the knife from the victim. Let's not forget that the young student did have a motive for killing the victim. Supposed motive? <laughs> the man the victim murdered nine months ago, Dr. Wilson, was the defendant's highly respected mentor. Is is what you just said true, Inspector? Could pulling a knife from a wound really cause the wound to bleed heavily? Yes. Think of the weapon itself as a stopper in the wound that prevents excessive blood loss. Unless a doctor is ready to provide proper treatment, that stopper shouldn't be removed. Oh, I... I see. Ha! This is why Yokel should stay on the farm. Even a quack with some obscure mountain fit from some ex obscure mountain village would have such basic information. What if they take a mental, tra mental training? Anyone who's ever given someone a little poke with a knife and pulled it out again knows it. Uh oh, well, I've never stabbed anyone, you see. Or pulled a blade out of a wound, so. It should be fine for classism. Ugh, if only that were a thing back in this day. Or even now. <laughs> uh, of course you haven't. I didn't bring you up to behave like a bandit. <laughs> Fair. Father, is it true what they're telling me? Yes, it's basic remedial knowledge for medics. Ray would have been well aware of it. Exactly, she would have been. Doesn't necessarily mean Suzato would have been. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> if she were to... Obviously, I'm mad at Ouchie for his comment. <laughs> so, moving on. If she were to claim ignorance of such fund fundamentals, that would prove fatal in many ways. But then, why would Ray have done it? Could she have pulled out that knife with full knowledge that it would be fatal for Miss Brett? I don't know. Ray never once mentioned anything about the knife to me. Uh, there's one thing that bothered me. Let me see if I can find that. Let me see if I can find that line again. Okay, nope, it's not here anymore. It, I seem to remember s someone mentioning. Let me see if I can remember what I was thinking about now. Some they mentioned something about the weapon still being at the crime scene, but when I looked at the photo, I didn't see it. Did I? And I even double checked to make sure I didn't miss it, but. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it anywhere. Wait, or unless this is it. That's not it, is it? Why would it be hanging on the back wall? Or back of the tent, whatever this is. Not look 
look like a knife to me. Yeah, I have no idea. Plus, it wouldn't. Plus, even if this was it, it wouldn't make sense for it to be hanging there. It would be somewhere on the ground, I would think. If it was left here. <laughs> And it was clearly removed from her body, so... Okay, uh, I'm overthinking for now. Let's just continue. Ray never once mentioned anything about the knife to me. It seems almost impossible to leave, but... Could my friend actually have... Suzato! Y yes Pull yourself together! You mustn't lose sight of why we're here. Ugh! Council, it's time for your cross-examination. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. However, I must warn you that if your cross-examination fails to identify any issue with the established facts, I will be moving to my adju adjudication immediately afterwards. I understand. Believing in your clients and fighting for their cause until the bitter end. I knew it would be hard, but I had no idea it would be this hard. Forensic medicine primer. Pulling a blade from wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. You say doing it without thinking could be a problem. Does that mean that if you used due care and attention, it would be alright? I wouldn't have thought this needed spelling out, really, but... The blade is like a stopper in the wound. Remove it and a serious hemorrhage will occur. In other words, a medic would need to be present before any attempt was made to withdraw the blade. Doing it without thinking would be madness. I just can't do it. Oh, well, thank you for such a thorough explanation. You see, Council? Yet without thinking, the result is a bloodbath. Ugh. Back to the witness testimony, please. In that case, there is an obvious exp explanation here. Which is... Clearly, the defendant, Raymond Bami-san, does not possess an ounce of sense. Okay, I'm not gonna argue that 100%, but maybe not the time to bring that up. <laughs> what do you think about that, Professor Mikotoba? I'm not sure that you should be labeling your best friend as lacking in common sense. Well, I thought we'd better than labeling her as a murderer. Fair. I don't know, young people today. That's friendship, I don't understand it. Careful, counsel. A lack of common sense can be a very dangerous thing. Is he throwing? What is he doing? Oh dear. That recoiled on me rather badly. That's life, I'm afraid. A lesson everyone must learn. Hopefully you can see now that this is really basic medical knowledge. Being involved in medical research, Mimbami-san would certainly have been aware of it. Hold it! But the defendant had suddenly encountered somebody she knew lying on the ground, bleeding to death. The sight could have shocked her delicate sensibilities, causing her to remove the blade inadvertently. I really don't think inadvertent actions can explain this. 
The woman is a medical research assistant. I can't imagine she would behave so irrationally. Oh, but irrational behavior is a woman's prerogative, isn't it? <laughs> what the fudge? Oh dear, you have a lot to learn about women. Only a small-minded man could have such bigoted views. <laughs> if he only knew! Oh dear, perhaps I'm letting my male persona take hold a little too much. Eh, don't worry about it. Well, have I managed to convey the basics now? I should cover the medical side of the argument. There's gotta be something here. Hold it! Whatever the motive, it just isn't in mabami sans nature to do something so awful. But she had both motive and opportunity. That's very hard to argue against. But you don't know the defendant! Attention! And you, counsel, do not appear to know the law! Yes, evidence is the only way to convince the court of your argument, not feelings. With this, fledgling the defender, I would almost say I pity the accused. So do I. Inspector, you will reiterate your point about the defendant's motive, please. Oh, yes. Miss Brett was in many ways the sworn enemy of Mimbami san. Hold it! Well, yes, that's true. Dr. Wilson recognized Mimbami san's talent and offered her the position of assistant despite her being a woman. She was extremely grateful to him. Yes, the Englishman appears to have been a very broad-minded individual. Dr. Wilson had no time for outdated traditions. He met with opposition, of course, but he believed firmly in mimbami sans abilities. Clearly, the defendant was in the man's debt, which only proves serves to prove my point. Uh, this is hopeless. I can't find a single crack in this testimony anywhere. If Ray knew that withdrawing the knife from the wound would threaten Miss Brett's life further, I just can't think of any way to explain why she did it. Suzato, it's at times like these when it's especially important to remember the fundamentals. The fundamentals? Evidence is what counts in the courtroom, Miss Brett. Of course, but I've been through the court record dozens of times already. I think. Perhaps you're forgetting something, though. You needn't take the evidence at face value. You can and must examine it in greater detail, too. Ah! Uh, I realize it's your first time playing the role of lawyer in the courtroom. So if you need a reminder of the rudiments, you need only ask. I'll do my very best to help. Examine the evidence in the court record? It's an idea, certainly. What should I do? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll ask for a refresher. Yes, Father. Spartan guidance is what I need. I, I think I might be overdoing it slightly, but... Very well. So, open the court record first of all with R1. Now, let's take a look at the fountain pen, which was submitted as evidence most recently. Simply press X to examine it further. That's all there is to it. Yes, the initials are in. They are clearly engraved on the barrel. Using the right joystick, you can look at a piece of evidence from all angles. You should have a good look at everything to make sure you haven't missed any clues. Yes, I will! Just need to rotate the pen with the right joystick and watch closely for anything out of the ordinary then. Hello? What's that? There's some sort of emblem here, look. But it isn't a Yoma University one. 
Bones must belong to some other organization, I suppose. A business of some kind. But that would seem to imply that the pin doesn't, in fact, belong to Ray. The fountain pen that the victim was found grasping in her hand. It carries the initials RM, as well as an emblem of some description. The details of the fountain pen have been updated in the court record. Pulling a blade from wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. That's basic knowledge that any medical. save just to be safe. last statement there. Well? The question is, Council, what about those white eyes of yours? Well? Ugh. Alright, let's see. Try to read calm and examine the events again. where that pin fits into this. Lid. Oh. Nothing appears obviously out of the ordinary here, does it? Now let's unscrew the barrel, shall we? This must be the little reservoir that holds the ink. Yes, you fill it by drawing ink from a bottle up through the nib. Is something wrong, Father? Just that there doesn't actually appear to be any ink in there, and there's, that's all. Oh yes, you're right. It's pretty much empty. Well, it could be on the French but I suppose. Crap. There's a very small amount of liquid in it still inside. Okay, so it's not gonna let me examine that again. Okay, no. 
The RM initials are very clearly engraved here. And the fact that Miss Brett was clinging to this pin in her dying moments is very clearly a message, too. To identify our killer, you mean? I uh, don't think there could be doubt that this is a key piece of evidence in this case. I guess that's it. A fountain pen bearing the initials RM. I still have doubts about that. And an emblem of some description. There's a very small amount of liquid still inside the ink reservoir. So let's try this again with the new information. Objection. Okay, nope. Okay, nope, that's still the same. Uh Seriously, none of these match up to me. I've already I've already tried to Head suddenly. Raucous England returnees tell all. This is the interview with you and Soseki san, is it, Father? It looks as though it's quite an exchange. Yes, he became a little over animated when he was talking about his time in England. The pho photographer managed to capture the moment his hand cried, chopped me on the neck. I do hope you weren't hurt. the newspaper from Soseki-san. There seems to be an important article on the back page as well. Exclusive. Deadly poison stolen from Yomei Medical Research Laboratory. From Yomei's Medical Research. Father, isn't that your lab? What the? Let me see that. The, the poison's been stolen? Is this morning's paper that Soseki-san gave us? Are you saying you didn't know? As embarrassing as it is, as that is for the head of the laboratory, I didn't. I'd not heard any such thing. Where on earth could the reporter have gleaned this inf his information? Come to think of it, there was no article mentioning this story in our paper this morning, was there? It's a highly toxic poison we've been working on in the strictest confidence. I'd put Ray in charge of the project. Ray? She was managing it? If what's written here is true, it means that she tried to hide the theft from me. And moreover, the details were leaked somehow. I, I don't believe it! We need to read this article very carefully. 
The article about the poison has been entered into the court record. An article about poison that was stolen from a laboratory at Yume University. Even my father, who was responsible for the lab, knew nothing of the incident. Okay, so I can't look inside it. Alright, just making sure. Let me see here. by this piece of evidence. Is that so, counsel? Perhaps you care to explain to the court precisely how? How? Well, definitively? The contradiction lies in your apparent eagerness to present an empty argument, I feel. a short break here before I continue, so if there's anything you need to do, now would be a good time, and I'll be back as soon as I can. See you in a bit.
Okay, I'm back, and sorry for not putting up that I was away. <laughs> that I was on my break. <clears throat> now, let's see here. I'm trying to figure out... Let me go look at the first two again. Your Excellency, I must object to the witness's last statement. And the evidence you thrust in my direction is supposed to prove your point? I apologize. I did present it rather more forcefully than I intended to. You will kindly refrain from these overly exuberant outbursts, Council, be they verbal or material. You really put me in my place there. I don't know how any of these fit with the pins, so the games wanted to point out for me. Objection! Ugh. See, none of these make sense to me. I think I did. Objection! Yep. I'm gonna reload because I don't want to stay with just one chance left. <laughs> Okay, I don't understand then. Because this was the hint that Dad gave me. Sorry, I can't remember his name offhand. So I don't know what else I'm missing. <laughs> In other words, there's no reason why the defendant would try to pull the knife. Oh shoot, I need to examine this again. Poison of stone. Okay, first off, with that in mind, let me save again. Okay, there we go. So I had the right clue, just the wrong item. <laughs> okay. No, there is one possibility. 
One very good reason why the defendant might have decided to withdraw the knife from the victim's wound. Oh, what? Ha! The Yoko not only has a poor grasp of law, but is also a poor loser! <coughs> Tell us then, what possibility do you think you've identified? It's here, in this newspaper article. An article about a deadly poison having been stolen from the from a laboratory at the Imperial Yume Unit. Attention! Really? The victim perished from a stab wound. Poison has no relevance in this case. But... Prosecutor Ouchie, you will let the defense speak. But... But a newspaper article. The court cannot rely on the kind of hearsay those wretched publications carry. I think you're getting confused with a tabloid. <laughs> Counsel for the defense? I am going to need some tangible basis for your claim. You will indicate to the court precisely what part of the newspaper article mention affirms your assertion. Your Excellency! Yes, of course. Uh, thank you. Ray would... Ray would never have done something to further endanger Miss Brett's life without just cause. The reason why the defendant pulled a knife from the victim's body is explained in the article where it the reason the the reason why the defendant pulled the knife from the victim's body is explained in the article where it says Wait, let me read it. Let me check that again. Oh, okay, yeah, let me read over this. Followed a lecture by at Yume by Sosuke Natsume on le August 11th it has come to light that a very disturbing incident took place. A deadly poison being secretly developed in the university's forensic science laboratory was stolen. Even the smallest amount entering your body, either via the mouth or via a wound from a poison-laced blade, would prove fatal in minutes. Current methods cannot detect the newly developed chemical. The university would have to be consulted. Why is the poison being developed? Onset of symptoms occurs in minutes, starting with impaired breathing and ending with acute contraction of the pupils prior to death. Such symptoms would be suggestive of this toxin. It's apparently an entirely new synthesis of alkaloids and rumored to have been commissioned by the military. Oof. Anyway, now that I've read all, let's see. The reason why the uh, poison... I'm gonna assume this. The article reveals the following property by the poison in question. When the toxin enters the body on a la knife laced with the poison, it's rapidly absorbed and causes death in minutes. Uh, are you suggesting? If the knife used to attack Miss Brett was laced with this very poison, it would explain why the defendant, Membami-san, would have withdrawn the blade as soon as possible. Yes, the truth is... It was an attempt to stop the poison from entering the victim's body! What?! Attention! This is complete and utter nonsense! Not at all! The defendant withdrew the knife blade from the victim's body not to accelerate the woman's demise, but to save her life, and the prosecution cannot deny the possibility. Have you not read the post-mortem report? The cause of death was hemorrhage! The word poison appears nowhere in the document. Well, well that's... That's because by acting quickly to remove the blade, the defendant prevented the poison from taking hold. Now please, this is clearly desperation. The weasel's last breaking of wind. Poison has nothing whatsoever to do with this case, as I believe the defense is well aware. We have no proof that the information in this wretched newspaper article is all reliable anyway. Damn, I'm getting tired of talking to him. Ugh, but I gotta keep it up. In 
that situation, what the student should have done is wait for medical assistance to arrive. But instead, you claim she suspected poisoning and took the potentially lethal decision to remove the blade. She must have had a strong reason for her suspicions then, or the argument makes no sense. Exactly! Well put, Inspector! On what grounds did she do it? Hmm, Yokel? Why did Ray suspect the stolen poison was involved? If you want grounds, I'll give you grounds. What? You, you can't possibly! From your expression, Council, it would appear those are not empty words. But naturally, as you stand in this courtroom as a lawyer, you must be aware that words alone, empty or not, are of no value in our modern justice system. The court demands evidence. Yes, Your Excellency. Well aware of that. I've seen him many times, from my place at his side in the Old Bailey. In that case, Counsel, we will present the proof for the court now. What evidence demonstrates a clear link between this case and the poison in the newspaper article? Okay, I think now I use this. Take that! How exactly would you explain this piece of evidence's connection to the newspaper article? In truth, I'm not really sure. But my father always told me to ask my elders whenever I was in trouble. So I thought I should ask your opinion, Your Excellency. If it is advice you seek, Counsel, then I suggest that before indiscriminately thrusting evidence under my nose, why not thrust it under the nose of the professor at your side? I think I think he means you. Good grief! Thrusting that under my nose isn't going to solve anything here. We must use our heads. The article in the paper had details of the toxin. Now, where have we seen similar details? Does no work come to mind? Oh, uh, you mean I ought to search through all the evidence looking for that? If I'm not mistaken, it appears the advice of your elders has given you an idea. Yes, uh, I'd like another chance to present evidence, if I may, Your Excellency. In that case, Counsel, you'll present the proof of the court now. Let me go and save again. And let me look through the newspaper again. <laughs> Or this part of it, rather. Okay, wait a minute, what is he asking again? Here we go. Okay. Take that! <clears throat> I would ask the court to refer to the notes section of the post-mortem report, which reads, Extreme meiosis, pupil constriction, was observed in the victim. Ugh! Clearly, being a yokel with no knowledge of forensic science, I have no idea. So please, do tell me. Presumably, the fact that this condition of the victim was noted in the post-mortem report means that it's an unusual symptom of death? Just well. <clears throat> Under normal circumstances, the pupils dilate when someone dies. If there was extreme constriction instead, 
That's most certainly unusual. Yes. What are you doing, you yokel detective? <clears throat> In the newspaper article, there's the following information about the stolen poison. Onset of symptoms occurs in minutes, ending with acute contraction of the pupils prior to death. What? <clears throat> if the defendant, upon seeing the victim stabbed in the back, happened to notice that the pupils of Miss Brett's eyes had constricted severely, yes, as a medical research assistant, she would have suspected poison immediately, without doubt. <clears throat> Prosecutor Alchi, I think you'll agree. This is very compelling evidence. You, you, you go student and you go professor. <laughs> I believe the defense has expertly demonstrated a credible reason for the defendant's actions. No. Yujin Mikotoba. Yes, Your Excellency. I believe you are best placed here to confirm or deny the veracity of the defense counsel's argument. You will tell the court the truth about the details reported in this newspaper, please. It pains me to have to admit it. But I'm afraid I don't know. You don't know? The toxin was kept under lock and key in my laboratory, certainly, but I wasn't aware of any theft. Do you mean to tell the court that the reports of this fe theft are unfounded? No, Your Excellency. Without returning to the laboratory to investigate myself, I couldn't say. <coughs> ha! Listen to that bumbling academic. <coughs> Unaware of the theft of secret state research from his own workplace until he reads of it in the newspaper. I take full responsibility for the incompetence of my supervision. Father! Tch, a pitiful situation for a university professor! You should have more control over your students, rather than allowing them off on killing sprees! That's... that's totally unfounded! Professor Mikotoba's fault. It's all... It's all my fault. Ray. Mimbami-san, you stand accused here. Outbursts like this will not be tolerated. But... It was me. I was the one who noticed that the poison we were developing had been stolen that day. What? So you knew. I... I'd been placed in charge of overseeing the project. It was the day that the professor and Soseki-san were interviewed together for the newspaper. That's when I noticed that some of the poison was missing. Just a tiny amount it was. <coughs> Why didn't you let me know immediately? I... I was scared. The whole project was supposed to be confidential, but some of the toxin had somehow been taken. So, I decided I'd try to get it back before anyone else found out. Because I had a very good idea who the thief was! The thief? You- you don't mean- <clears throat> Yes, of course. It was that dainty English woman. Miss Giselle Brett? That's why I decided to join the little group of people going to the seaside. Inside the beach hut, I confronted Miss Brett. But she just sat on a stool at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me as if she knew she was untouchable. <clears throat> I know it was you who stole the poison! Well now, whatever do you mean? <clears throat> and then, she suddenly got to her feet, before falling to her knees in front of me and then collapsing on the floor. That's when I saw the knife in her back. <clears throat> I couldn't understand what had just happened. 
And then, a moment later, I was seized with fear. The pupils of her eyes had... They had shrunk to tiny pinpoints. I don't believe it. In other words, you realized the victim was suffering the effects of the stolen poison. My mind started racing. I hadn't seen anything pass Miss Brett's lips whilst I had been with her. With which left only one possible way for the poison to have entered her body. On the blade of the knife in her back. Not train of thought was what spurred you to withdraw the blade. Yes, if the amount that had entered her bloodstream was small enough, she might still have a chance. That's what I hoped. Really, I... I'm so sorry for staying silent all this time. Your attempt to hide the truth of what happened is not something that can be overlooked. However, I have duly noted the courage with which you confessed in the end. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. It's barely perceptible, but I do think the balance has shifted a little here, in this courtroom now. Objection! Oh lord, now what? Your Excellency, do not be deceived! The victim just collapsed before your eyes, you say? Well, Mambami san, if that is the case, perhaps you could explain how Miss Bread came to be stabbed. Well, um. You have no answer because the simple truth is that you stabbed the victim motivated by revenge. Objection! But you have no conclusive evidence to prove that assertion, do you? I have evidence, and it is very much conclusive. This ought to be good. Huh? What's the prosecution counsel up to? It was brief, but he hesitated for a moment there. I'm almost sure of it. You will produce the aforementioned evidence at once, Pro Prosecutor Ouchie. Perhaps some praise is due, young yokel student. What? I had imagined there would be no need for me to submit this evidence. But you brought this on yourself! What the? Could a more damning shot exist? The cruelty in the air on that beach is almost palpable! This evidence, more than any other, reveals the true extent of the accused murderous nature. For it shows the precise moment that mebami san plunged her dagger into the nice victim's back. And you have no proof that that's what she was doing there. Just that she had her hand on the... handle of it. No, that's not true! No! I... I don't believe it. Ah! It could also be you're pulling that out. Exactly! Y you can't tell just from a still photo. <laughs> order! 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 Counsel for the defense, was it you who was responsible for that shrill scream that just pierced my courtroom? Yes, like this is the first time she's done it! Why are you just now complaining? Perhaps his voice had yet to break. These yokels are slow on mine and slow to mature. I'll show you, Soda Mature. Careful now. Susato is starting to show her face here. Oh, okay, yeah, I started thinking of that. It is often said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and here we have ample proof. The court will accept this extremely cogent pho photographic print as evidence. Cogent?
of argument or case. Clear, logical, and convincing. Yeah, no. Sorry. It's not. <laughs> the incriminating photograph has been entered in the court record. A photographic print taken at the moment the victim was attacked. My friend Ray can be seen kneeling over Miss Brett. Yeah, see, that's all it says. I can't believe he's had a photograph like that up his sleeve the entire time. Uh, let me check that new photo. actually analyze anything at the moment, but yeah. <laughs> important. Whoever took this photographic print was a witness to Miss Brett's death. The court must be allowed to hear this person's testimony. Ah! I will uphold the defense's demand. The prosecution will reveal the identity of the person responsible for taking this photograph at once. Watch him not know. Well, I'm afraid I can't do that. Yep. Pardon? You see, this print arrived at the Imperial Police Bureau headquarters by express post yesterday. But there was nothing to indicate the sender's name or address. The provenance of the print is unknown. Goodness! Are we to understand then, Council, that in full knowledge of the fact that this photograph has the murkiest of origins, you nevertheless Believe it fit for submission as evidence in the Supreme Court? That's probably why it took so long to present it, because he knew this and hoped no one would point it out. When you first produced that print before, I noticed that you hesitated for a brief moment. Mm -hmm. Because you knew that it wasn't completely reliable evidence, didn't you? Silence, you yokel student and blabbering professor! What matters is the blatant truth that this print so eloquently expresses. But the defendant has already admitted to pulling the blade from the wound. Clearly, this isn't the moment that the knife was plunged into the victim's back, but... The moment it was withdrawn? Don't waste this court's time with your ramblings! Indeed, without knowledge of who produced this print, we have no means of verifying the claim. And the scene it captures is without doubt the most compelling evidence presented to the court. If the defense is unable to shed any further light on the matter, I believe the conclusion is clear. Oh no. 
Suzato. This is the time for you to fight. If what you've established so far is true, then there can be no doubt. This photograph shows the moment that Ray withdrew the blade from the victim. Y yes, we just need to prove that somehow. <laughs> You'll have plenty of time to rear your defeat on the slow train back to the provinces. And to rue the day you came up across Takitsuchi Alchi in a court of law! If I can't determine who took this photograph, then the trial is going to come to an end. There must be a clue somewhere. There must be some way of working out who took it. Well, Council? Mm-hmm. Your Excellency? The burning, the burning question is who took that photograph. And the truth is... President at the time of her murder. A former visiting student to the British Empire who returned to Japan after a spell of bad luck with the law. He is now a successful author and a witness in the current case. Hmm. I'll look at that photo one last time. over here, over on the right side of the photo. It means it was- Oh, I think I understand what it means. to capture the moment his hand karate chopped me on the neck. But it doesn't say who the photographer was. I have the answer. This isn't about whether I can or can't come up with the answer now. I simply have to. The identity of the person who took this dramatic photographic print is, I assure you, something the defense can and will reveal. What? No, you can't possibly! But as you so boldly claim that you can, please do enlighten us! Unfortunately, I'm unable to present a name. How utterly underwhelming! Did you really believe you could? However, I am able to present evidence. The defense has a piece of evidence that reveals important details about the photographer's identity. What? Very well then, counsel. Present your proof to the court. Which piece of evidence do you claim reveals something about the identity of the mystery photographer? Well... Let's start with this, I guess. Take that! What is that? The newspaper again? Raucous England returnees tell all. It's not the headline that's relevant here, Your Excellency. It's the photograph. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that there are some white lines on the right-hand side. Oh, yes, indeed. They had already caught my eye as it happens. Ha! What of it? A shadow of some kind, presumably. 
from the branches of a tree or the like. There are no trees growing inside my laboratory at the university, I can assure you. Now, if you look closely at this photograph... Good gracious! Yes, exactly the same pattern of lines is present on this photograph, too. Attention! Well, well, that, that tells us nothing! <clears throat> ha! Yes! It's a shadow of some kind, definitely, from the branches of a tree! You quit with that. There wouldn't be any trees growing inside a hut at the beach council. <laughs> What's quite remarkable about it is that the two patterns are absolutely identical. How could such an extraordinary similarity have transpired? The curious matching pattern that appears on both photographic prints is a result of... A camera defect. Obviously, it must be due to a problem with the camera used to take the photographs. With... with the photographs? photographic device? Yes. We can confidently say that the camera's lens must be scratched. And that the scratched lens causes unwanted lines to appear on every print taken with the device. In short, the two photographs under consideration here were taken with the same camera. The bat? There must be hundreds of such camera devices here in the capital. It would be utterly impossible to identify the owner of this particular one. I bet Sosuke might know who took it. Objection! I think you're forgetting, Prosecutor Alchi, that one of the photographs featured in a newspaper article. A uh, newspaper? Ah! That's right. The author of that article is the mystery witness to this crime. Wah! Wah! Wait, what was that? Oh. Uh, I see why you're called a raucous English returnee. What are you yelling about? You've already testified! It's many men. Mini Mimo, I tell you. Mini Mimo! What? Mini Mimo! Um, Soseki san, what was that? Did you say Mini Memo? Uh, ever since I returned to Japan, uh, a reporter from the Show You News has been hounding me, following my every move. A reporter by the name of Ryten Men. Many memo. Yes, yeah, sounded me from dawn to dusk. Oh. So my first so my first thought means nothing. So the first thing I did with the initials means nothing. Alrighty. Ah! But now that he mentions it... The sec they secretly spy, snapshots, scribble stories, and discover my privacy! Wait, that's him? You gotta be kidding me! Uh, not the brightest bulb, is he? Could that same reporter be... Camera left of him, a notebook to the right. There I am, stuck in the middle with right and minimimo. Minimimo. You're saying that this picture was taken by. By Minimimo, yes! My lord, your excellency, Esquire! Esquire, okay. Pfft. Not sure if he's an Esquire. <laughs> Officer, find this newspaper reporter at once, bring him to my courtroom. We will adjourn, adjourn for a short recess in the meantime. Oh, uh, yes, Your Excellency.
As... As you say, Your Excellency. And one more thing. I want this knife, the murder weapon, examined for traces of poison. Why was that not in evidence? If we've had it the whole time, why was it not in the evidence? <sighs> you will solicit the assistance of the Imperial University's medical department for the task. Understood? Okay. That made no sense. <laughs> to be continued. Uh, and I think this is where I'm going to go ahead and end the stream for tonight. Because this... All this did do a number on me. Save your pro current progress. Yes, please. So yeah, this is where I'm going to end the stream for tonight. So I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, you can follow my YouTube channel. Link below to see my past streams. And I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully we will finish up this case tomorrow. So I hope I'll see you then. And if you stick around, I'll drop a raid. Okay, let's see who I'm going to raid tonight. Uh, we'll go ahead and raid Lions Pride Studios, who's playing Red Dead Redemption 2. So I hope you stick around for that. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a good night and take care, everyone. Bye.